Hello everyone. I hope everybody is doing really well. Spring is almost here. It's feeling very spring-like today and I thought it would be a really good opportunity to kind of show you some things that I'm doing in the garden, some of the things I'm doing inside and just kind of walk around and talk to you a little bit about everything that's happening. I have a ton to clean up. This is all from last season and I did do some winter sewing. I was just checking on these the other day and I'm seeing a couple, not much activity um, in my poppies, but I don't see anything else. Uh, I've got some cosmos and some phlox, rhubarb, amaranth. In this bed here, I have some garlic and just one little sad Swiss chard that needs to be pulled. Uh, this is the first time I have planted garlic and I did this in the fall. I've got some in this bed as well. So that will definitely be something to look forward to. I love to cook with garlic. And let's see, I have two varieties I planted, Mateki, and then that one I know is music. So yeah, it's really exciting to see uh, all these things that I've never experienced before with this being a new garden space for us here. Uh, this was my bed where I did potatoes last year. And you're supposed to rotate the bed, so I'll probably pick another area to do my potatoes this year. Oh, but let me turn around and I'm gonna show you, you guys saw last year, I put the espalier apples along the fence here. And if you missed that, these are from Bower and Branch. And there are four varieties of apples. I have Macintosh, uh, Fuji, Gala, and Honeycrisp. And Honeycrisp is my favorite, they're so good. Uh, but the system that you see them on, the trellising here, that is a temporary system. So I'm gonna come along probably really soon, actually, now that it's getting a bit warmer, and I'm gonna do a cabling tension wire system where they're affixed to the fence posts here with turnbuckles. So you won't see this big frame and you'll see more of the structure of the espaliers. I have some pruning on my roses to do. I'm just gonna come along in here and clip off like anything coming out at me like this and any of the smaller canes that are weaker and kind of really groom this up quite a bit. I always do my lavender in the spring as well. You can see it looks really, really dreadful right now. I've had this here for years and what I do is I just come along and I hack it down um, maybe about an inch and then it all flushes back with fresh new growth. This is the uh, Sweet Romance Lavender. In this area here, I have some snowdrops coming up all in here. We've never planted snowdrops, so that is really exciting too. Lots of cleanup. You can see I have grasses I have to take out. I need to clip my hydrangea. I wait on all these things um, until springtime. I love to leave things out for the habitat for the birds and for the animals to have uh, some food and some shelter during the winter months. You'll see my birdhouse doesn't have a top on it. I have to put that back on. I'm trying to dissuade some house sparrows from nesting in my uh, birdhouses. So if you don't know about house sparrows or English sparrows, they are a menace to the birding society. They are non-native. Um, you should Google them and, and look them up because I really wanna try and get them out of my garden as much as I can. Um, They're very destructive to other native birds. This is the big change. You've heard me talking about it for such a long time now, and it is really, really finally happening. Uh, two weeks ago, we put our deposit down and we have the greenhouse coming. So our shed will be going away. Mark and I are gonna do this whole project ourselves. Now the greenhouse won't be here until July, but we're gonna do the whole build and everything. So I'll let you know every step of the way. I'll show you maybe some of the, the deconstruction and what kind of uh, footing we're gonna have down. Uh, we're planning on doing kind of uh, concrete uh, footing around the base, but then have gravel and brick or just brick on the interior. I will do a more comprehensive video about the greenhouse. This one is super pretty and I just am so excited to have that space in the garden. I have fig trees now that I'd like to protect. I have uh, citrus I'd like to start growing, start some of my seedlings um, in the greenhouse. So it's just something I'm really excited about. Now the shed is an eight by 10 and the greenhouse is also gonna be a little bit over eight by 10, but close. And we've got this beautiful wisteria here in the corner. 
and I am going to do my best to leave it be and try and train it up the greenhouse as well. It's very established here, but these are so fast growing that if I did have to, you know, clip it back or do anything like that, I am not at all worried about it. And it's a native wisteria. It is um, Amethyst Falls. So it behaves really well and it's been here, I'm gonna say probably 10 years, maybe 12 years at this point. So lots of cleanup to do. I have lots of leaves that I want to kind of brush out of the way. I like to leave the leaves, the leaf mold. It's a great mulch and a great insulator for the plants, but I've got scraggly perennials all over here and my hydrangeas I need to come along. These are a little quick fire and what I'll do is I'll just come along and I'm going to take these down probably to about here and you just want to find two nodes like this here and just clip right above. So that's what I'll do with these. And you can see I've got some daffodils and tulips starting to pop out. It's all very exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. And then another little quick fire here. But this is the state of the garden right now. Pretty, pretty sleepy right now. Grass, my clover lawn is dormant. <laughs> so that'll be coming along soon. So cut back the lavender probably in, maybe in a week or two. I've got some hellebores in here starting to wake up. I do need to clean this bed out. It's really messy. And then what I'll do is I'll clip out some of this tattered old foliage from last year and then these will look all nice and pretty. See, lots of them peeking out here. So I'll clean that out this weekend too. I'm gonna take you inside the house and show you some of the things that I've been working on in there. Oh, <laughs> and for my tulip bulbs, I did just come along and sprinkled a generous amount out front and all around out here for the bunnies and the squirrels because you know, they love to dig up a bulb or eat the foliage before it has a time to come out. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, hi, <laughs> hello, hello. You guys met Baxter in one of my videos. He's a good boy. He's a miniature schnauzer. He is four and a half months old now. So it's kind of garden central, as you can see everywhere. I have these little cute, you know, guys know I love Wakefield Handmade. I got a bunch of these little work pots. I just think they will be so cute in the greenhouse and useful for little seedlings and look pretty too. I've got a bunch of little cloches. I actually got these from Ikea. I ordered them online. So like little mini terrariums. And these were really affordable. I just bought a bistro set too. I'll put a picture of that up on Facebook Marketplace. I, I just got a bistro set uh, used on Facebook Marketplace for, it folds up for inside the greenhouse because, well, firstly, let me tell you this. This is not gonna be, I do not want this to be a she shed. I want it to be a very functional. I wanna grow plants in it. I want it to have a useful purpose. This is not going to be some kind of a prop or anything like that for me, but I do want to decorate it and make it look pretty and, and do all those things and, you know, have those little moments where maybe I want to put a little plant on a table or whatever. <laughs> but realistically, it's going to be a functional greenhouse. I actually have a greenhouse fan, um, I'm sorry, a greenhouse heater that I just got, and I can talk to you more about that when the time comes to, but it's, it's going to be a place for growing, for sure. My kids just had breakfast. <laughs> but just to show you over here, I, I showed you this in my last video. This is kind of like my little topiary corner here. And I did just get this one from uh, Les Moreaux Greenhouse uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, the others are from MY Topiary. And then this I showed you, I think, no, maybe I did, did I? I don't know. This is a uh, boxwood honeysuckle on a little heart form. And then just a little moss ball I made. This was from moss in my garden. And I just kind of picked the biggest chunks that I could. 
and I mounded up a ball of soil and kind of pieced the moss all together. I did this last summer and then I just kept it in a cool and shady spot and I kept it nice and, and moist and there it is. A uh, little lemon tree my friend Brandon gave to me a start from his lemon tree, a little propagation there. But this one, this is big. I love this cone shape and you know what? It was about the same price point as the others. So yeah, I was surprised about that. And you can even see by the thickness of the main trunk there, look how much thicker that is than some of these. So got a little orchid here. I've got my orchid here. Still putting out a couple blooms and a couple more to come here. This is a little wire vine. But let me take you down into the basement, into the creepy basement, and show you what I have going on down there. You know what? Let me stop into the kitchen first because there's gardening everywhere, you guys. Okay, so in the kitchen, here's what we have going on. Right now, well, first of all, first of all, I got some uh, cyclamen corms, right? I really, I, I love the cyclamen. I forgot I had them. Of course, you know, this happens. They were outside. They are a crusty mess. I am soaking them right now, hoping if I can rejuvenate them, I'll pop them up, but I don't see much life in them. The roots were kind of just like, I don't know. I've never planted cyclamen from corms. I've only uh, got the plants uh, already started. So we'll see. It ain't looking good. <laughs> All right, I have my little topiaries here. This one is a rosemary, and then I've got the two myrtles on the ends, a lemon cypress. And then this one, I am super proud of myself. This was just a bushy cone, and I took to this with my little scissors uh, the other night, and I started to form it into a little spiral. I'll flash a picture up here and show you what this looked like. Um, it's not something that I showcased or wanted to do a video of or anything, <clears throat> excuse me, because I had no idea what I was doing. Like until I get a little more comfortable with things, I'm not one to uh, be bold and show what I'm doing in that way. Maybe eventually, but definitely not right now. But I don't think it turned out half bad. For my first attempt in making like a little spiral, I think it looks really cute. I'm happy with it. So moving along, more gardening things. Right here I have a plate of paper towels and you might have seen some gardeners, Erin at the Impatient Gardener. This is a method she loves to use for her sweet peas. I saw she did it last year and she's doing it again this year. So basically you just wet and layer your paper towels and you put your sweet peas in between. You can put these inside of the sandwich bag. I have um, cling wrap here plastic wrap because I didn't have any large enough uh, sandwich bags. But what you do is, these are your sweet pea seeds. See? Ah. These are ready to plant in my little root trainers. Basically, you do this to kind of get a jump start, see which ones are viable. And then you know, you know, once you see them starting to germinate, you're already seeing them start to show signs of life. See right there. And then you just plant them in your root trainers, which I'll show you in the basement in a moment, um, as you normally would. But it just kind of gives you a jump on the germination and because these do take a while. And then you're kind of, you can be confident that you have that much success then. Now you'll see a lot of gardeners talking about reusing and repurposing even things like food trays where there's like a little lid for maybe some pastries and you use that as a humidity dome. That's a great way to start seedlings on a budget. But these, if you wanna, uh, these are a little bit more of an investment. These are from Amazon and I can put a link below, but I think these are great and a nice size to start. And they're nice and sturdy too. These are not flimsy plastic. So it's not like these are one and done and you're gonna be tossing them. I'm gonna wash these out end of the season and I'm gonna use these year after year. So keep that in mind if you did want something a little, a little longer lasting than um, a recycled food container or something like that. There's so many options. And here I've been starting to store. My friend Donna gave me this for Christmas. Um, so she sent me this adorable little greenhouse tin. And I have seeds that I'm going to be direct sowing. Uh, so sunflowers, um, borage, nasturtium, zinnia, 
all sorts of things I know I wanted to wreck, so I'm storing in this little uh, cute can to make it easier for me. And then I got this little birdie pin. It's a little felted bird. Isn't that so cute? Do my best uh, Lady Gaga impression with my bird brooch. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Uh, this little bumblebee tray. Let me show you this, guys. So I started following this really great potter on Instagram. His name is Troy, and he is absolutely special and wonderful and fantastic and a talent. Look at this. I was super excited. He has an Etsy shop. He actually has a YouTube as well. But you guys know how much I love bumblebee. And I had to snap this up. So this is Troy. His page is Troy Made It. And you can find him on YouTube. And here's his information. And I just think he is the bee's knees. He's so good. Okay. I'm going to take you into the creepy basement and show you what's going on down there. This is kind of my storage room. You can see it's where our electric is. And, oh, gosh. I have a sewing machine. <laughs> All sorts of things down here. I need to clean up. There's not a lot of space. My Dahlia tubers that we'll talk about that later. Not too good. These might be okay. This box is not okay. But I did purchase some new tubers, of course. I mean, I'm not going to let my failure keep me from buying a whole new batch of uh, Dahlia. Why would I do that? <laughs> All right. So this is the seed starting dance uh, set up. So let me just talk to you a little bit about what I have. So I've got the fans going. First of all, you want to start with a good seed starting mix, and you know Espoma Organic is my go-to. So I moistened the seed starting mix really well. Let me show you that. You're going to get to see my basement all over today. So this is my little seed starting area, and usually I have this up in the kitchen. I bring it up to the butcher block area where I just put this thick plastic tablecloth. It's a little more cheerful up there, and this whole tray, you know, I can carry and take up with me. And I do have, here it is, one of those gotta have it photo cases, suitcase for my seeds, of course. Uh, but anyway, you want to, this is very dry. So you want to pre-moisten all your soil and get it nice and moist and then plant your seeds. I use a little chopstick here. I'll just poke a little hole. I top them with a little bit of vermiculite. I spend more organic vermiculite here. And basically I just do a thin layer on top once the seeds are in. I do this for all my seedlings and I'm going to be honest with you, I do it because Monty Don does. So if Monty does it, I'm doing it. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, uh, the vermiculite keeps uh, things in check with your moisture and keeps things kind of from getting too funky and uh, kind of just so think of it as a moisture control agent, basically. I'm going to be starting some more seeds. And um, these are root trainers. So these are for your sweet peas uh, or anything with long root system that does not like to have their roots disturbed. Let me show you. I'm going to open it up here. So it folds like this. You put it together. You fill it with soil, right? And then you get your sweet peas going in here. And I'll show you the ones that I have started in the other room there. But these are great because sweet peas have a long root system. Their roots don't like to be disturbed. You know, I water everything in the trays from, from underneath. These are the trays right here that I use. And I water everything from underneath, so the holes in the bottom there soak up the moisture, soak up the water. I use, also use a little spritz bottle and um, kind of, if it looks like things are getting extra dry, we'll give them a little bit of a spritz. So once you have your seeds planted, you want to cover them with a humidity dome. Once you see them start to sprout, the humidity dome can come off. Um, you don't want to harbor any excessive moisture or anything like that. That's another way the vermiculite helps. But once you see most of your sprouts up, like in this situation, you can just go ahead and take that humidity dome off. So starting over here, I have a bunch of tomatoes. I'm a little early starting my tomatoes, but that's okay. Um, I've got indigo, indigo, cherry, green zebra, pink Siberian, this is a pepper, uh, albino, 
bullnose. I've never planted any of these varieties before. And then I have a mix of calendula. It was literally called calendula mix. Last year I did the calendula bronze beauty and it did fabulous. Uh, it's a wonderful catch crop and a wonderful pollinator magnet to encourage the bees to come into your vegetable garden. So I like to plant them in my raised beds and um, you can see I have a couple up. And then the fan gets your little seedlings nice and strong and dancing in the breeze there, simulating uh, the wind and makes nice strong plants. Next up for the tomatoes, I will be potting those up into larger pots and I'll be potting them deeply uh, so that they have uh, nice strong stems. Boop, low down. Okay, in here I have all kinds of petunias. You can see, I will take this humidity dome off once I see a couple more of the cells start to pop there, but I have never planted petunias from seed. These are all wave petunias and I am Super excited, you guys. Uh, you guys know annuals can get really pricey. I love perennials. I want to have all the perennials and supplement as much I can with other plants from seed. I really would love to do that. I think perennials and shrubs are such a worthy investment. And the annuals, you know, you love them and you plant them. But then it, in my zone, zone 7A in New Jersey, they're a goner. So, you know, it's something you have to keep shelling out year after year. If I can get more bang for my buck with my annuals by planting them from seed, that's a total win for me. Okay, so over here I have a bunch of different things. This is Victoria rhubarb. I've never grown rhubarb successfully. I grew one tiny, sorry little seedling last year and then I brought it out uh, like a doofus when it was way too cold. <laughs> and it immediately died, of course. Uh, but, you know, I have those beautiful rhubarb forcers from Wakefield Handmade. So I would love to actually have rhubarb um, in the back there dancing. That is some amaranth. I planted those in the winter sowing as well. These are those root trainers. So the ones I just showed you are going to, sh are going to uh, contain the seeds that I showed you up in the kitchen. The pre-sprouted ones and the paper towels. These here are already getting started. I find it interesting Mammoth Choice, right? And I didn't soak it because I even wrote no soak on there so I could do kind of a test. Did not soak this. And, I, and I've not planted this mammoth one before. And I can see how much larger they are than the others and with the no soak. So there you go. And then there are others in the back there that I did soak that are showing very little germination. So, hmm. Interesting. Uh, I don't think it matters one way or the other. Then just my little spray bottle. I go along. This is like a fine mist. Say, I'll pull it out and just give them all a little mist on the top of the soil there. I've got a couple little pansies poking up here. Oh, I found, oh, there's a couple more. Yay. They weren't looking too good, but they are starting to come along. This one, I think, got a little bit too much, too much water in the beginning and um, as a result, not too happy, but so Larkspur never planted it. It's not coming up. I think it's just a, it just takes a while for that one. Look at your seed packets and you'll see how long each thing takes, uh, takes to germinate and all the good information. Good seed packs will show you that information. And then in here, oh, I just skipped over like my most exciting thing. Hello, my geraniums. I am super duper excited about geraniums. I plant geraniums every year. They are just a beautiful old fashioned staple in my garden for as long as I can remember and I want all the geraniums. I know that seems basic, but it for me, oh, that is just the heart of my summer garden. I put them in my window boxes. I'm gonna do a lot more of pot groupings with just geraniums and a nice little kind of collection of pots all huddled together with different geraniums. If I can get these going, I will be, well, I, I apparently I can get them going, but <laughs> if I can get them to sustainably keep going, that will be wonderful. You can see they're starting to form their true leaves. These here are the first leaves are called cotyledons. They, they get the energy to the plant. Then you see the first true leaves starting to form there in the center. I have a few varieties. I have Pinto, Rose, and I have apple blossom 
That's another apple blossom. And then this is a tray of geraniums as well that isn't going along as, as good as the first. But I'm keeping an eye on it. Then down here, more petunias. Yes, lots of petunias, you guys. <laughs> I had no idea how this would go because I've never planted them from seed. So I just went crazy and planted a lot of petunias. <laughs> But I'll, I'll plant them in the landscape. I'll plant them in hanging baskets, uh, containers. So if I can get these to Germany, that'd be great. And the principal at my son's school contacted me the other day and asked me if I'd like to help with their new raised beds. Absolutely. This makes my heart so happy. These are, I have to think, snapdragons. Sorry, I had a, a moment there and it says it right here. Reading is fundamental. I should just do that. Reading is good. Anyway, these are snapdragons. I have never planted snapdragons from seed. This is totally new for me. This is a fun year for me, you guys. I'm trying a lot of things I've never tried before. You can see I was pretty heavy handed with them and um, I'll be thinning them once they get a little bit more established, but oh my goodness, I am super excited. Lots of snaps here. I have more things I want to plant too. Don't think, don't think this is the end. And what else did I want to say? Oh, geraniums. I have geraniums on a heat mat. So there are others that recommend a heat mat too, but the geraniums, um, I really wanted to get going. So I did exactly what they said to do for them. Um, last year, everything, everything I planted last year, no heat. And I had a pretty good success rate with everything that I grew. However, it is best to give the plants what they need if they're saying, light give them light if they're saying darkness give them darkness if they say a heat mat use a heat mat and if uh, your seed packets are very vague and you're not sure google that's it all i can say is you know google is your friend look it up and it'll you'll find more information um the pansies where are my pansies somewhere in here uh those did need cold stratification so i put the seeds in my freezer for 24 hours before i planted them so there's that. And I have another pack in the freezer right now next to some um, water ice. <laughs> I'm back here again. Okay, <laughs> real quick. Just kind of going over all the things go going on in the home and garden right now. So this is one of my favorite Wakefield flower pots. This is the Cotswold half pot. And I just wanted to show you the beautiful patina on it. I just cleaned this out. I scrubbed it gently. I don't want to lose that patina. I really love the aged look on pots. I kind of feel like, I don't know, it just speaks to me and it shows the, the love that the gardener and all the years, oh, I just love it. So with this, um, I talk about this all the time. One of the things with the terracotta pots is you want to be careful with them. Peter fires them at a super high temperature that makes them more frost resistant, but definitely not frost proof. You have that freeze thaw that could cause a beautiful container like this to crack. So what I do is I plant them up in the spring. I bring them outside. I enjoy them for spring and summer. And then I clean them up and that's what I use to plant my amaryllis, my paper whites, forcing bulbs, anything like that would go in these. So I get to enjoy them outside and inside, and then I just do it all over again. Hi, we've got a Baxter that loves to sit in the sunlight. So over here, we have a sprinter box, a sprinter box wood. I have had this in my pot for four years now. You can see there's remnants of Christmas. This was a very light clean up, guys. I have to come out here and really hit it soon. But as you can see, it is thriving and doing really well in here. And I'll plant around that with probably some pansies for spring. And let's see, over here, I did want to just show you this real quick. That is a climbing hydrangea. I plan on planting that on the side of the house here. I'll talk to you more about that later. But let me just tell you how resilient plants are. So I ordered this the end of November because I'm still buying plants in November and I know you guys are too, so don't try and tell me you're not. <laughs> I ordered this in November. I kind of guess I thought it was gonna arrive in spring, but no, it came in December. <laughs> so it comes in December. I opened up the box and I meant to come back out here and pot it up, uh, you know, put it in the garage, something. That did not happen. It would have, what did happen was complete neglect. I closed the box and I left it sitting here until about 
four days ago where it was dry as a bone and very angry at me. So I immediately, you know, gave it a good drink and I can see buds and signs of life. So if that does not tell you how strong plants are, poor thing, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, down here, I have my little ivy pots. I've had this ivy in here for, oh my gosh, years. And it stays here over winter and it does beautifully. And then I clip back, I just clip back some of the heavier uh, tendrils that were coming out that were really kind of uh, beaten down by the winter. But you can see it still looks wonderful and it's been out here all season. So that's kind of like my go-to and then I'll train it Oh, you know, a little bit up the little pot trellises there. And I got some pansies that have uh, overwintered in there. You can see I've got all kinds of tulip and daffodil action happening. Super exciting. These are the wee white hydrangeas. I did just give them a clip, remove any of the dead wood. The wee whites uh, bloom on new wood as well, just like the little quick fires I showed you in the back. These are from Proven Winners Color Choice. Um, and so you don't have to worry about the time in which you prune them. I just choose to do it in the early spring. And here, here we have a beautiful bunch of hellebores. Oh my goodness gracious. These were from Bower and Branch that I potted up last spring in a video. I can't believe it's already been a year. And I put them on the side of the house. I did not give them much care at all. Left them in this container and here they are looking absolutely gorgeous. This just makes me want all the hellebores. What can I say? I mean, they are just a beautiful plant. And to see something like this when there's still so much cold and, and not spring yet happening is just, it's just amazing. I love them. I have some little pansies starting to poke out again. I planted those in the fall. My boxwoods are doing great. These are the baby gem boxwoods, looking really good. And I won't prune on anything like those until uh, it gets much warmer. And any chance of frost has passed on your evergreens. Um, you don't wanna cut the evergreens when there is still a chance of frost because you could spur new growth and that new tender growth then could get fried from the cold temperatures and just you know burn, burn up your plant. Anyway, that's it you guys, just a quick update. I hope you're all feeling wonderful and just uh, doing really well and having that, that new hope of spring. So I'll see you in the next video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching.